Okay gang, let's pick up a few more definitions and then we're gonna practice this whole type one, type two error, type one consequence, type two consequence thing. All right, so we're gonna pick up two new symbols. We're gonna pick up alpha and beta. So here we go, the probability, right? That term that we've been looking at since chapter three. So the probability of a type one error is denoted by alpha and it's called the level of significance or significance level of the test. So then we say, with the, uh, thus a test with alpha 0.01 is said to have a level of significance of 0.01 or to be a level 0.01 test. Okay, so this alpha, I'm gonna mention that you're gonna hear this a bunch, okay? It's gonna become a cutoff number when we get to our 13 steps. And I know we're not at our 13 steps yet, and this is a lot to take in. Welcome to chapter nine. It is a lot to take in initially. But when you hear me refer to alpha, the industry standard is 0.05. All right, so plenty of uh, hypothesis tests out in the real world are done with a 5% alpha level, okay? And I'll talk about why that's the cutoff and what it means and all that fun stuff in a little bit, but it's the probability of making a type one error. You set the alpha level before you ever get going. All right, so when you're an experimenter, right, or a researcher and doing this, you set your alpha level. Okay, and the industry standard is 5%. If a type one error is pretty bad, you might lower it to 1%, all right? If it's not so bad, you might raise it. It really just depends, but industry standard 0.05. So I could call it the alpha level, level of significance, significance level, okay? But it's a probability. It's a number between zero and one, and you want it to be on the smaller side because it is the probability of making an error. You don't wanna like have a 50% alpha level, like, oh, I'm gonna mess up half the time. That's not a good idea. All right, the probability of making a type two error is denoted by beta, okay? So again, another error symbol. Alpha is 0.05 as an industry standard, and I can't give you an industry standard for beta because beta depends on what alpha is, all right? So again, you will pick your alpha and from your alpha, a beta will be determined. Now, I'm not gonna go through how to calculate beta. If you ever wanna know, email me, come visit my office, hang with me, I will go through how to get beta. I've taught it in the past and it takes so long to calculate and it's pretty convoluted and students struggle with it. I just don't think it's worth it anymore. So I'm not gonna show you how to calculate this. But again, if you ever wanna know, I'm happy to show it to you. You guys just let me know, all right? But what I do need you to know is the relationship between alpha and beta. And the relationship is, as one goes up, the other goes down. They're inversely related. So if alpha goes up, if you let the probability of making a type one error go up, then by consequence, the probability of a type two error will go down. And the reverse is true too. If beta goes up, alpha goes down. So they're, they've got this yin-yang relationship, all right? And ideally, they would both be zero because you would never make a type one error and you would never make a type two error, right? You, you wouldn't make an error, that's ideal. But in order for that to happen, you would have to run the census. And again, we're not gonna run that many censuses or sensei, right? We don't want to, it takes a lot of time and money. So the only way to make sure you won't, or to ensure that you don't make an error is to run the census. We're not gonna do that, right? So we're gonna have some kind of alpha and beta. You will set your alpha. From that alpha choice, your beta will be determined. I'm not gonna go over the calculation of the beta. I just want you to remember that they have an inverse relationship. As one goes up, the other goes down. So after you assess the consequences of your type one and type two errors, identify which error to control. Using a smaller alpha increases beta and vice versa using a larger alpha decreases beta, right? So let me write this as alpha goes up, right? Beta goes down. And the flip of that is also true. As alpha goes down, beta goes up. So we're gonna practice this idea in this question, right? We're really gonna try and figure out, well, what do we want? Do we want a larger alpha or a larger beta? All right, and here's, here's what I mean. So as we read this, Let's think about what land we're in. All right, we're gonna pick which set of hypotheses is correct. And then we're gonna figure out well, which error do we wanna control for, right? So we're gonna assess some consequences and identify which error to control. All right, so let's, 
let's take a look at this. I'm going to scoot this up. All right, so that's looking okay. All right, here we go on this one. So it says, suppose that you are an inspector for the fish and game department and that you are given the task of determining whether to prohibit fishing along part of the Oregon coast. You will close an area to fishing if it is determined that fish in that region have unacceptably high mercury content. Okay. Assuming that a mercury concentration of five parts per million is considered the maximum safe concentration, which of the following hypotheses would you test? All right, so let's, let's take a look, right? We've got two hypotheses. Things that I notice is that I've got some means, right? I, I've got mu's apparently, and I've got units of parts per million. So I'm in mean land, right? And also here, we see that we've got, as soon as you saw you had numerical data, excuse me, that you had units, you knew you were in mean land. I also see it from the symbols here. All right, so I have to figure out which of these two I'm going to use, and let's see which set of hypotheses are competing claims. All right. So as we look at this, I'm gonna close an area to fishing if it is determined that the fish in that region have high mercury content. Okay, and assuming that a mercury concentration of five parts per million is the max, the max safe level, what are we gonna do? Okay, so let's, let's look at each of these and see which are competing and which are not competing. All right, if mu is five. All right, if mu is five, would I close that region of the, coast or would I keep it open? So I'm not, I shouldn't say that. If mu was five, is that safe fish or is that not safe fish? So let's think about this. If I found out that the average mercury content was really five parts per million, that's still considered safe. So I'm gonna put safe here. Okay, so we have safe fish. I can go even further, these are safe fish and safe fish. All right, if we took a bunch of fish from a part of the coast and we found out their average was greater than five parts per million in terms of their mercury concentration, right, that exceeds the maximum safe. So these are dangerous fish, right? Or I could say not safe. I could use the complement, not safe fish. Right? If you found out mu was less than five parts per million, right? That's still considered safe fish. Okay. And when you look at it, or at least two um, sets of hypotheses, this is the one you have to pick because these are the ones with competing claims. If you had chosen these, it means whether you rejected the null and picked the alternate, or you failed to reject the null and kept the null, all right, either way, you just say, hey, it's safe fish. So these are not competing claims, all right? And when you hear this, is considered the maximum, right? The maximum safe concentration, that's saying that we need to look for anything that is greater than that safe concentration. That's what I'm looking for, okay? So let's see if we can figure out the answer to this question. Would you prefer a significance level of 0.1 or 0.01? Now, when you hear significance level, all right, that's phrase for alpha. So do I want alpha to be 0 0.1 or do I want alpha to be 0 0.01? Now, based on our alpha, we would determine beta and I'm not gonna give you the math for it and it, and it doesn't matter, but I want you to think about between these two alpha levels, what has the larger beta level, okay? And we know as alpha gets larger, beta gets smaller or as alpha gets smaller, beta gets larger. So let's take a look at this. As they went from this suggested alpha level to this suggested alpha level, you can see that alpha went down. It went from 10% to 1%, right? So alpha went down. That would mean as alpha went down, beta went up. So when alpha goes down, right, this means the beta is larger here because my alpha level went down, so beta went up. So I could also say beta is smaller on this one. So we'll have a decision to make in a moment. We wanna go ahead and assess the consequences of the type one and type two errors, and then we will identify which error we wanna control. Right? Using the smaller alpha increases beta, right? So I, here's the smaller alpha, that means it's gonna increase beta. So let's see if we can figure this out. So I'm gonna scooch this up, okay? 
And then let's figure out what the type one and type two errors are. And then what are their consequences? All right, so type one error. All right, so in a type one error, it's you reject the null when it's true. Or I look at it as the first equation's true, and I mistakenly concluded the second. Now, I'm going to write my errors up in terms of the alternate. So let me put that note here, right? Write errors in terms of h sub a. So I'm going to always write my errors in terms of the alternate. OK, so in a type 1 error, the null is true, and I mistakenly conclude the alternate, right? Or equation 1 is true, and I mistakenly conclude equation two. So I conclude that the average mercury concentration is greater than five parts per million. Right? I conclude average mercury concentration is greater than five parts per million when it isn't. So you see, I'm writing that error up in terms of the alternate. You can literally see the phrasing of the alternate, greater than five parts per million. Okay, let's do the type two error. So in a type two error, the alternate is true, and I mistakenly take the null, or I would say I fail to reject the null when the null is false. All right, so let's do this. I do not conclude that the average mercury concentration is greater than five parts per million when it is. So again, both of these super similar write-ups, but nowhere in any of these write-ups is mu equals. I don't talk about the true average concentration being equal to five parts per million. It's always in terms of the alternate, which has the greater than symbol. So I conclude the average is greater than five parts per million or the complement. I do not conclude the average is greater than five parts per million. So both of these have language about the alternate it's just a matter of where the knot is. The knot is at the end here, and it's in the beginning here, okay? So that's my type one error and my type two error. It's very directly related to my null and alternate, right? Mu, we knew it was the average mercury concentration, right? Greater than five parts per million, okay? So we've got all of that happening. Now let's see what the errors are, excuse me, what the consequences are, and that's gonna help us figure out which pairing we want. Do we want the larger alpha with the smaller beta, or do we want the smaller alpha with the larger beta? So let's take a look at the type one consequence and the type two consequence. I'm gonna push this closer to the top so that we have all the room that we need. Okay, so here we go. Let's do type one consequence. And type two consequence. Okay, so here it says, I conclude that the average mercury concentration is greater than five parts per million when it isn't. All right, I actually am gonna scooch this back down. Sorry, I said I wasn't gonna, but let me see if I can get the null and alternate in view. I think I can. I'm like the little engine that could right now. Okay, so here we go. I conclude that the average mercury concentration is greater than five parts per million. So I think the alternate's true, right? I'm gonna reject the null even though I shouldn't have which means I conclude that this fishing area is not safe, right? So I'm thinking, oh, this is not safe. I don't want people fishing here. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna close that region down. So I'm gonna close a safe fishing area. Okay, so I close a safe fishing area. All right, that's one error that I could make. Let's see, or at least that's the consequence, excuse me, to this error. All right, so I could have also made a type two error, 
what's the consequence to that? So here, I do not conclude that the average mercury concentration is greater than five parts per million. So I don't think the alternate's true. I keep the null, right? Or I would say I fail to reject it, right? But it was. So I think the fish are safe, but really they aren't. And if I think the fish are safe, I'm gonna keep that area, that fishing area open. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm not gonna close a dangerous fishing area, or I do not close an unsafe fishing area. Okay, so these are my two consequences. Because again, there's always, there's five options. If it's safe and I keep it open, great. If it's dangerous and I shut it down, great. If it's safe and I shut it down, that's an error. And if it's unsafe and I keep it open, that's an error. All right, so then which consequence do we think is worse here? Do we think the type one consequence is worse or do we think the type two consequence is worse? And unlike example five, I think this is a little less gray. I think most of us would agree this is the worst error, right? You don't want people getting mercury poisoning because they're fishing from something that's dangerous, especially if you're part of the fishing game department, right? You don't want that happening. So if that is the worst error, that means you would want a small beta. Want a small beta. In fact, oops, let me wrap that around to the next line so we can see it. All right, you want a small beta. All right, you would like ideally beta to be zero. You never want to make this error, right? But you want the smaller beta or the smallest beta that you can find. And so how this works in stats is if we realize like, oh my gosh, I really don't want to make a type two error. I want to lower the beta threshold. One way you can control for that is you can increase the threshold for making the type one error. You say, okay, I'm going to be more likely to make a type one error, all right? Because the type one error isn't as bad. Right? So if I just kind of suck it up and say, all right, I'm more likely to make a type one error and I'm okay with that because then I'm less likely to make a type two error. And that's, the, that's definitely the worst error. So when you want the smaller beta, you wanna pick the larger alpha. So we wanna go with this option here. So if I am given a choice between a 10% alpha or a 1% alpha, I'm gonna pick the 10% because yeah, okay, I'm gonna make a type one error 10% of the time, which sucks, I don't like making errors. But I know that if I make it 10% of the time, if I choose to make that error more often, by consequence, I will not make the type two error as often, or I should say the probability of that type two error is going to be smaller. And that's, that's better for the larger picture, right? For humanity, for the larger scheme of this experiment. So in terms of choosing between these two significance levels, I'm gonna go 10%. Because if I make the alpha higher, it means I got the smaller beta and I'm feeling good about myself. All right, so with that, that's our prep work before we really get into hypothesis testing. So when we get to the next video, you're gonna see your 13 steps finally laid out. They're gonna look overwhelming. They're not all gonna make sense. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna stare them down and we're gonna work through a number of examples um, showing you how those, that 13 step proof looks. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.